Uwiteka tajya ngo tumushimire munsi iyo stand day which is a blessing one. Isaka tya wera kandi no mugisha kwatwe. I pray that you may open our eyes that we may see the blessing in this day. Utungura maso yacu tuje kubigisha iyo munsi. The blessing in this moment. Kandi mugishaka kanya. And I just want to pray that as we open your word. Kizasera kugira ngo igihe tugiye kuvuga ijambo that you may speak. Uvuge that you may reveal yourself. Kandi wigarakaze that we may know more about you. Kandi turusha kugusobanukirwa. Of your love. And that it may transform us. We thank you so much. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Uh, the title for today is He Didn't Have To, But He Had To. And uh, we're going to start in the book of Genesis. Anytime you're curious about a question, or you're curious about a thought about God or about Scripture, the best place to go, the best, the best place to go is the beginning. So we're starting in Genesis. He didn't have to, but he had to. And it says in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 16 and 17. Ariko igiti cy'ubwenge bumenyesha kiza n'ikibi ntukabijeho kuko umunsi wabiriyeho no gukuza ifi nchumura so 16 and 17 okay 16 and 17 I'm sorry 16 says uwiteka imana yamutegeke iti kugiti cyose cyo muri ingobyi uryo ujibuto zacyo ugushaka 17 ariko igiti cy'ubwenge bumenyesha kiza n'ikibi ntukakijeho kuko umunsi wabiriyeho so it says, and the Lord commanded, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of, not, of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. So, so God has given a command. And we know that God is righteous. And anything that is different from God or contrary to Him, contrary to His word, is the opposite of righteousness. It is wicked. So, so as we read this, God has given this command, He has given it to Adam and Eve. But uh, as we read in verse 3, or chapter, chapter 3, sorry. And uh, we know one through seven, what happened was they did the exact opposite of what God had told them to do. And I want us to keep in mind what is the punishment. If you read in verse 17, it says the punishment is that in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So as we continue reading uh, chapter 3, uh, we know that 1 through 7, we see, we see the fall happens. I want to read what God says as a punishment. And, and it's verse 16 through 19 of chapter 3. He said to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In the pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I have commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In the toil you shall eat all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall, you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground for where you were taken, for thus you are, and for thus you shall return. Can we take a imana if you don't go to tea? Who is a Munza who is a child of our Pitinda? Uza Jutara, Avadu Avara. People that quarrel Kuzo in a Kumuka away, 
nawe azagutwara mama cuma karindwi na dana ubwira ati ubwo bumbi mugore wawe ukarya kugitsi na kubujije kuzaje byaho uzajya uza uza nyuta na kuvunga imisi yose yo kwawe uzajya ibi ibi ubwoze kubiruhira uzajya ukumereramo imike n'imitovu nawe uzajya imboga zo mu murima it's interesting that when you read when you read about the story when when Jesus or when uh when Moses saw asked God to see his his like I wanted to see, I want to see you in your glory um, the story is interesting because as as the Lord passed before him he proclaimed something uh, and in Exodus 34, verses 7, Exodus 34, verses 7. And I just want to read this first part because it's very interesting. It says, it says, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Amen for this verse. Amen. Amen for forgiveness. Amen. Amen for justification. But, but there's something interesting that I want to point out. So in Proverbs verses, in Proverbs chapter 24, verses 24, I see something very interesting. It is almost contradicting. He says, He who says to the wicked, You are righteous, him the people will curse, and nations will abhor him. So if you think about the concept of God forgiving us. So I have a question. So if somebody had murdered your loved one and they went to court and the judge looked at him and the judge said it's okay you're forgiven you can leave and you watch, you watch your murderer leave the room so you ask the question, what kind of judge is this? Where is the fairness? Where is the fairness? The law says this guy should be locked up for life. Did he pay you? And automatically that judge would be seen wicked. Or wrong. Or corrupt. But there's something interesting that takes place. And it's a concept that I learned. And I want to share with you. Remember the title, he didn't have to, but he had to. It's going to seem like we're going off topic for a second. But I want to beg you to follow me. 
David is the community. As we go through scripture, amen. amen. Okay, so turn with me to Hebrews. Chapter 7. Verse 1. Verse 1. Hebrews 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 chapter 7. And it says, now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witness that he lives. Even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak, for he was in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Now, what I know what I so we can actually go to the very story where Abraham does this. And it's in Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14 and it's 18, 18 through 20. It says, Then Melchizedek, the king, of, of, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of the Most High, of the God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, God of the Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Kandi mesha sedeki umami wisalem azali mitzima na vino yalu mutabdi wima nesu bakios amuhesha umudishati aburahamu abumisha numana nesu bakios yiru shumunisi bakumyari kandi ma nesu bakios ihiba azwe yaku garije awisha bawe luka aburahamu amuatimu nishumi tabios amen so what the scripture is telling us is that Levi paid tithes to Melchizedek through Abraham because he was in the loins of Abraham. So let's take this concept and say, okay, so you have Abraham, then you have Isaac, then you have Jacob, and then you have Levi. Through four generations, Levi was able to do something to Abraham. So I want us to go quickly to Romans to see something interesting. It's Romans chapter 5. And starting, we can start at verse 12. And we're just gonna go more to the coming. We're just gonna kind of run through this and see a bunch of different things here. It says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, thus death reigned to all men because all sin. Kuko, the message to Mukita Jazanwe, Nisinu Mundu, Arupu, Rukazamanita. So, though we all are in the loins of Adam, and through Adam's act of disobedience, we all disobey. So, I just want to say something real quick. So, what things are we doing today? That are what things are we doing today is affecting our kids. 
The decisions you make today, your kids will follow. So you have to question yourself. Am I going to make a mistake for the next generation? I just want to keep that in mind. But I want to continue we can drop down to 18. It says, therefore, as to one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Through Christ Jesus, through his righteous act, through him coming into the loins of Adam, and redeeming us from this pit of sin, we also can take part in a new Adam. And that's what's beautiful because you can see reading in verse 19 it says, it says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many were made righteous. Why is it important for us to be born again? Because we come out of the loins of Adam into the loins of Christ. And through Christ's righteous acts, we are given those. And God sees us just as he sees Christ. But my question is still, why? 